Howdy folks, Kirk and Jason here with Kirk Giordano Plastery. Today, we're going to show you common lathing mistakes and how to fix them, how to do it right, guys. There's a particular reason this time. If you guys lath your own work, you can save a ton of money. And how much can you save? As a stucco contractor, on a whole house now, we bid it usually 40% for the, the lath. The lath is the moisture barrier. And we bid it 20% for the scratch coat, 20% for the second coat or brown coat, and a final 20% for a color coat maintenance free finish. Now the lath, that's a lot of work, but it's one thing on our channel, you can learn how to lath, and we're gonna get into the worst case scenario uh, after this. I say that because yesterday we just went to the worst case scenario and the fellow says, hey, what do you think? I thought, you, I'm gonna be kind and give you a dishonest, answer it's okay if this is your first time he said this is my first time i said how long did you spend he says an hour i said next time spend at least three hours dude uh but anyway i'm going to show you some little simple techniques because what after this we're going to show you some really uh boo-boos don't do the what the other guy did yesterday anyhow here's what you do guys if you're going to laugh and try to save yourself a lot of money that's 40 percent on a house now, most of you guys are going to say, man, I'm not going to stucco or lath my own house, but you can. Uh, you, throughout our videos, we have, if you put how to lath on our channel, 20 different videos will come up with, or maybe 50, of lathing techniques. So I'll just show you some simple things once more since we had that odd, bizarre thing yesterday. Okay, you take a weep screed, weep or drip screed, same thing. Now, the weep or drip is to protect the mud seal. The mud seal is here. What happens when... Water gets on the mud sill, expands, wood rots, steel rusts. So the, the bottom of the screed has got to be down below here at least one inch. What happens if it's like this and you can't see this, the mud seal, but we know it's there. The water comes with a sprinkler. The sprinkler will get it wet. It'll swell. It'll push the stucco, crack the bottom. It'll rot. Then the termites come and, hey, let's go party and eat that wood. So... Always put this weep screed at least one inch below the mud seal because with the wind and rain, it'll go under there. So here's what you do, guys. I'm, I, we already did this to not get too carried away and bore you guys too much, but you take a screed, you put it on, and this screed is going to go over this screed. There's a little lip here, and this one is going to go over here. Now, say for example, I'm going to go ahead and pop a nail in here because... My screw gun can't get in here. And because my screw gun or my lathing gun can't get in there, you got this in the way. The head's too big. i uh, just do it like that. Now, the, the moisture barrier, guys. The moisture barrier is two layers of paper. Just look at, at this stuff here. Jumbo tag, 60 minute, two layers. Now, say, for example, if I grab this paper here, on a vertical, what's the overlap? Six inches, but we usually go about a foot just to make sure. On a horizontal overlap, what is it? Three inches, guys. So three inches. So what I'll do since I've got this already done is I'm going to go a foot. And I want to go at least a foot over, the, over what we've already got. This way, we're sure that when it rains, I mean, it'd have to rain for a good, uh, a good month in order to saturate all three coats of, of stucco to go through. Now, what I do as a rule, guys, is I mark my studs. Now, you could use a crayon, you could use a chalk, you, you could use whatever, but the, in the next video you'll think is that a comedy video it is not it's the real mccoy where somebody did something uh they gave it the best shot and i told him dude at least you gave it your best shot that's good but don't do that anymore unless you're going to spend some more time learning all right now because i've already got this piece on and this piece is way over man we'd rather go way over than not enough and and notice i mark the stud because what you're going to see next in the upcoming clip is Ah, uh, well, it's a kind way ludicrous. It's uh, silly. But, again, fella gave it his best shot. And he said, hey, Kirk, what do you think? This could be a video? I said, 
dude, you don't want me to answer that, do you? But uh, we did it, and I said, okay, sure, I'll use it to show folks what not to do. But it's a good, good show and tell what not to do and what to do. And what I do, guys, is we just mark it with a chalk and try to go down as, as straight as you can. If you're, if you're going all weird like this, then your staples are going to go weird. So, okay, now that is the moisture barrier. That's the weep screen, the moisture barrier. It's two layers of paper. Uh, we're going to show you next uh, how we attach the lath. And that is what this guy did. Uh, you'll have to see it to believe it. Anyway, uh, I'm going to take a second here and, and get a piece started to show you so I don't sp spend too much of your time. All right, guys, I'll show you the wire. The stucco netting is the most important thing. So, again, the video coming up right after this is kind of humorous. But just to prove a point, I'm going to get this. We, I, I stapled one side, and I'm just going to pull it. Usually a couple guys pull it, but I don't need a couple guys. I'm just going to... Come on now, get in there. Okay, to prove a point now, <laughs> coming up soon, you're going to say, man, Kirk wasn't kidding when he's talking about laughing mistakes. Uh, but here's how you do it. You follow the studs. And so if a stud is here, and this, this wire is furred out the proper way, you could see where the indentations are. These red pieces, everywhere where it's red, you can put a staple, and that gives it the correct fur. So, for example, now, I'm just going to put a few in. I'm just going to use this row. Now, now, granted, I'm following these. Here's what is kind of critical. You follow the uh, joint up. Here's where it's entwined. I'll follow the in entwine up, or I'll even sometimes follow this. But either way... As, as you follow the, where it's twined up, or you just use your eyeball. I just generally eyeball it up. And, and if area like this isn't, follow the nail pattern. Here's your stud. The stud is every 16 inches. Here's the stud. So 16, 16, 16. And, you know, I could look at the wire down here, but I don't need to. You just uh, follow that. Now... What is done right, guys, I'll show you something. And here's where the fellow yesterday had the most, well, that's, we lost three, uh, about three hours uh, correcting very odd stuff. So uh, one of the, the oddest thing was not that he overstapled, but his tops were real bad, but that's another situation. We won't go into that. Okay, now this wire is self-furred. I think if you take it, Jay, please, at an angle, you can see that uh, right here, the red is furred. Right here, the red is furred. Now, if you look at this red all the way down, red all the way down, red. And what does that do? 98% uh, of this wire now is away from the wall. Only like 2 to 4% is pushing it away. This way the stucco gets behind it. And that's what the fella did wrong. And I'll tell you what, we do a lot of work for GCs. Many of them either put the wire on backwards or they overstaple it. And if this wire is like flipped around and it's flat, the, the walls have a tendency to crack. So this is the simplest way to do it, guys. Unroll it properly and you'll get a kick out of what we did yesterday because... Uh, he didn't put enough time in. He said he watched it for an hour and he did a, an addition type shed. But I told him, next time, man, watch it for a couple more hours. Don't overstaple it. So uh, anyhow, my name's Kirk. Jason on the camera. We thank you for watching. And remember, you can save 40% if you do the lath. If you're not sure, again, I'll repeat it. Go to our channel, type in how to lath. About 20 different videos on every detail like the weep screens, like how to do corners. I usually tell people, let me do the corners. You guys just do the paper and wire because the corners actually take a little bit of time. In. Anyway, we thank you for watching. And as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one.
Hi folks, Jason here, and I'm here to tell you something you probably already know. That like most content creators on YouTube, my dad and I are members of the Amazon Affiliates Program. What does that mean? That means that we can show and link you to some of the most commonly used tools in the plastering trade on Amazon, like our hawks and trowels, scoops, floats, and some of the other things, our battery-operated tools for breakout and cutting, etc. Now, if you buy those tools from those links, we earn a small percentage of that. That allows us to keep making these videos and keep putting out quality content for you folks to enjoy. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching and from the entire Giordano family, We'll, we'll see you on the next one.